those of you joining, we're going to get started in about one minute. So thank you for everyone. This is Andy Lombard, Executive Vice President, Arizona Commerce Authority. We welcome everyone to our ACA Small Business Bootcamp and Resource Collective. Amazingly, this is week 11, which uh, is gone by quickly. We could tell you that. We don't even uh, imagine that we could have uh, been doing this for 11 weeks, but it's fantastic. And we want to go ahead and thank all of our community partners who have participated, provided incredible subject matter expertise and topic uh, delivery to all of our, our bootcamp participants. So thank you so much. And especially thank you to the National Association of Women Business Owners and Karen, who has joined us today, who's gonna to be a wonderful presenter for us. So we're really excited to have her. Um, as everyone might know, we, uh, we have been doing this for 11 weeks and it's uh, a boot camp that's designed for daily uh, specific topics. We've uh, published those topics out each week. Uh, next week is a great slot of, uh, slate of topics and tomorrow is another really, really good one as well. We also on our website have a, a wonderful resource collective of all of the videos and all of the uh, presentations and all of the tools um, and uh, leave behinds that the, the team has left us too. So it's fantastic. So please do check that out on our website. That's azcommerce.com forward slash small business bootcamp. And the resource collective is something that we are going to continue to grow. Uh, we are starting to look at what that looks like down the road, and we believe that there's going to be some really exciting um, ideas that we can do to help all of our small businesses throughout the state. Uh, this week, we've had a really great week, very busy. Uh, today, we are going to be re-energizing your business through, with a growth model, and Karen's going to lead us through that. And tomorrow is navigating your business through COVID-19 disruption, which will be a fantastic uh, session as well. Just a quick update, um, for those that you're not aware, the PPP has extended for applications through August 8th. So there still is time, a little bit less than a month. If you still want to apply, there are a number of great resources to fulfill those loans. If you do not have someone and you're interested in doing that, please contact us. We will let you uh, know and who, who to get in contact to have a PPP loan. There's still about $110 billion as of the end of June. So that's probably gone down a bit, but uh, there's still a, a good portion of money. And in Arizona, we've had about $8.5 billion for small businesses and nearly 80,000 small businesses in Arizona have taken advantage of that. And on average have received $107,000. In addition to these programs, we have a lot of different resources. We've wanted to call out our SBDC partners uh, throughout the state. It's super important, uh, great work that they're doing including our uh, Arizona at Work uh, program. And also yesterday, we had a great presentation from our manufacturing team, the MEP, Manufacturing Extension Program at the ACA. Uh, just a fantastic group to help any of our uh, manufacturers. As well, of course, if you're, if you're not aware of this site, you should be. It's Arizona Together, AZ Together, um, ArizonaTogether.org. Uh, please check that out. It's a resource guide. It's from the state office of, of the governor, and it has many, many different valuable resources for you to take advantage of. In addition, there are a lot of links and uh, capabilities on our site, so please do check that out as well. And please stay informed and let us know if we can help in any way. Well, I'm really, really pleased to introduce uh, Karen Russo. As I said, she's representing the Association, uh, National Association of Women Business Owners, but also is the author of Money Keys and is a Money Momentum Coach, and I'm really excited to to hear her presentation today. So Karen, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Andy, and thank you to everybody for having us here. So this session today is strategies and tools for business growth so that you can be energized, inspired, and equipped to return stronger. That's what we're all about. And when we say business growth, you'll notice that the theme there is re-energize. So growth is about energy. Growth is about moving forward. And you heard Andy uh, refer to me as a money momentum coach. So growth is not just speed. Momentum is what fuels growth. And momentum is wise movement forward. So that's what we're about in this conversation. Now, growing a business is challenging um, at any time, isn't it? Uh, there's ups and there's downs. And the journey of success is, well, it's individualized. So uh, I've got a model here of what success might look like. So for you, 
you know, sometimes what we think is people think success is a, a linear incremental movement upwards. But really what success often looks like is that uh, success is one step forward, three steps back, ups and downs, churning, uh, clients change, markets change, pricing change, vendors change. And now we've been through so much um, as an economy, as a neighborhood, as a nation, the channel for success, the roadmap for success, it requires your energy to believe that it's possible. So I want to start by saying, I believe that you and I and all of us, yes, we can cope and react to what's happening. We can survive and get stronger. And I absolutely believe we can grow. So I want you to think about your success model now is going to be specific to you. So your success model now is going to be based on your situation. It's going to include your creativity. So your mindset, your energy, who you are as a leader. Your success model now is also going to include the strategy, the business, the models that you have for increasing growth, the ideas that are the ones for you to work with. And your success model now is going to require that your processes are efficient, that you've got the right tools and the right resources so that you can leverage the people, the systems, the things that the Arizona Commerce Authority and more are putting forward. So really for you to be personally and commercially successful, this session is about idea generation. It's the creativity piece that's absolutely essential for the energy you'll need to move forward. And uh, what I also wanna say is, I'm gonna mention along the way where your creative ideas can be supported by some of the more analytical models like the business canvas mapping tool and others. So along the way, I'll point out where you might want to go more deeply into some of the analytical tools for implementation. All right, let's start with you. So you want to grow. You're already an expert in growth somewhere in your life. So often when we think about best practices or benchmarking, we'll always um, want to hear from, and I've got three good examples of organizations or leaders that have done a great job with business growth. I also want you to benchmark yourself. So model yourself. So this happy business owner represents all of us. Where are you already growing? So I'm gonna encourage you to look around your life right now in your business, your personal life, your communities. Where have you already been proactive, creative, and grown? So it could be you had creative ideas about safety in your business when you had to shut down quickly. It could be that you and your team were able to grow in your camaraderie and effectiveness working together. It could be that you and your family discovered, I certainly did with my mom, who knew you could teach Zoom to anybody? Like my mom's in another state, she's back east, but we've grown in our ability to connect every day by Zoom. And it certainly wasn't what I intended, but it was a way of growth that I can use as a marker for what else is happening in my business. So take a moment and model yourself. What's already a successful place of growth? If you can do it there, you can do it in your business. So you're growing. And now let's look at your business growing. So I brought a very simple business model that I want you to use as a way to mark where is your energy for growth. So as I show you the three areas of a business model, and this is a very simple way of thinking about a business, a business solves problems and makes a profit. When I show you these three areas, think about where are you focusing your energy and where do you wanna put more energy or less energy? So we'll begin here. 
purpose, values, brand. Every business needs a sense of why are you in business? What's the purpose of your business? What are the values? Integrity, excellence, abundance, inclusivity. And what's your brand stand for? What's the promise you have in the marketplace? In order to grow, you're going to need a purpose, values, and brand that is inspiring to you and to your clients and to your team. And you want to stay involved with that purpose, value, and brand. Businesses also require a foundation. So what are the legal structures, financial systems, operational models, technology? What's the foundation that allows you to be in business? And of course, that's going to vary depending on whether you're a brick and mortar business going more blended, whether you're manufacturing services, product, what, depending on how you need to work with information and technology, but you do need a foundation. And yet, neither your purpose values brand nor your foundation actually solve a problem or make money. What solves problems and makes profit is this piece in the middle. So a business solves a problem that clients know they have, they want to spend money on. A business markets to attract ideal prospects, sells to turn those prospects into clients, and then to be successful, delivers at margins that include profit. So even a not-for-profit business solves a problem, goes across the way. Even a luxury goods business, uh, people may have the problem of they need more inspiration in their home and they want to invest money in luxury art. Even an esoteric type business. Every business that has a economic good is solving a problem. So one of the things that's very helpful for you to consider right now is in order to grow, invest your energy in excellence, energy, and creativity along that center section. Sometimes business owners will want to tinker with brand because it's interesting and creative, or they'll want to tidy up the foundation because it feels like um, it's you know, kind of um, cleaning things up and getting some structure in place. But where your energy as the business owner is likely needed, depending on whether you have five people, 50 people, or 500 people in your organization, your energy for growth needs to be about the part in the middle. And so think of an idea right now that you intuitively know could lead to business growth for you. So select a business growth idea that you want to explore and let's move it through the process. So here's the criteria for the idea that you have. Is this a good idea for growth? The first criteria is to what extent does this idea align with values? What's the why behind this idea? You do want it to fit the why. The second question is, how smart is this idea? You know, what do we want to do? And can it really move our business forward? And how do we implement? What resources are required? The how. And with each of these criteria, I'm going to share some tips, and then I'm going to share an example of an Arizona business owner who's made some ideas that are leading to growth. So the first is align with your values. So whatever idea you're working with, does it fit my personal brand and business values? And for many of you, especially now, it's going to be some version of safety and people first. So is what you're doing in accordance with safety guidelines? Are you making sure that your people, your team's well-being is front and center? 
It's also really important if you want to grow to be able to manage your risk for today. And it's a bit of an ironic theme you're going to see throughout today's message is that the more transparent you are with your community, the more in conversation you are about how you're managing risk, in many ways, surprisingly, the more effective you'll be. Do be visible with your clients, your community, and your team. So if you've got a value for inclusivity, you may be talking with your community and with your team about getting a variety of viewpoints in input when you make a decision about going forward with a blended offering or with a new way of delivering. Connect with your clients' needs now. So this is another place to think about growth is many people, many of your clients have been tremendously impacted in their own economy and capacity to spend and to buy. And at the same time, many of your clients essentially want and need the services that you have to offer. If you um, have business clients that are essential businesses, they may have more complex needs that you can serve. If you have a consumer product, you may have consumers that need a new version of what you have to offer. Do not be shy about connecting with what your clients need. And our first example of a business owner who's done that really well is James Ellis. The business is CrossFit Infinite Strength. And uh, this is the uh, Scotts, North Scottsdale CrossFit Infinite Strength. That's James in the middle the muscled one who owns a CrossFit gym. And what James has done that has been really powerful is he has the values of health, respect for individuals, respect for safety and the requirements, the government and health requirements that are needed. He also has respect for being flexible and a respect for community and communication. So in March, he was able to, within hours, be in communication with his clients through a Facebook tribe group, through email, through short videos, clear message. Yes, the gym is closed because we are complying and here's the Zoom offering. Here's when you can safely come and check out equipment. Here's an opportunity for an outside class. He was able to stay in touch with his community. And as a result of that, he's done really well. So I interviewed James and I'm about to show you a short, uh, less than two minute video where he talks about the results he got by staying connected to his values. So I'm here with, uh, with James, who's now of uh, CrossFit Infinite Strength and Hammer CrossFit, which is so exciting. And I want everybody to know that, um, that this is a muscle on a 59 and a half year old woman that would not be here were it not for James and the fine team at CrossFit. And we were talking about the connection to the community and how that's really helped you to think about your like you haven't been being all strategic about growth, but instead you've been thinking about how to take care of your current community. So tell me a little bit, James, about the average gym membership and what you've seen and how, what you see going forward. Um, sure. So I've been in the, the fitness industry in some capacity for about 15 years now. Um, most of that's been you know, personal training or coaching or something along those lines. Uh, and I've worked for um, both big giant facilities like Lifetime Fitness for five years, and then also in the CrossFit space where um, the, the experience is a lot different. Um, but in the, in the small gym boutique world, which is what we're a part of now, um, the average membership, uh, the average lifespan of a member is about eight months um, around the, the industry. And at Infinite Strength, it's, it's around 23. So nearly triple. Um, and the interesting thing is that number actually goes down when you introduce new members, right? So um, I think about all of the new people that we've seen in the last year or so. Um, and I mean, what that really means is that there's a large percentage of my population that has been here for four, five, six years. And so um, it's really amazing. 
And so you can see uh, that James has been able to have sustained membership and growth membership by being connected to his values and to what his customers need and want. So that's the piece that the, I really encourage you to think about. What is it your clients want and need that is valuable, that is right in alignment with what you value, with what is the essence of what you're up to? So for you, what are the individual team or brand values that are essential as you, as you decide on your strategies to grow right now? And you might have a list of seven or eight brand values, but two or three of them are your growth values for now. The next piece is to think about as you evaluate growth strategies is to get creative about the ways to grow. So most of you know you always want to start with, particularly when you have an emergent situation that has a big fast change like what we've just had, how do you protect revenue from existing clients? And this is where continue to get creative with blended offerings, virtual offerings, safe offerings. Sell more of the products and services you have to existing clients. Sell existing products and client services to new clients. So those two dynamics, this seems very um, simple, but sometimes simple is the place to start. Sell more stuff to the people already buying from you or sell the stuff you already have to new people. Those are often just the simplest ways to think about growth. And then ironically, you can raise prices. Yes, you can raise prices even now if what you're delivering is unique value. So whichever of these kinds of strategies you decide upon, one of the ways to be sure you're growing and not just trying out strategies is to have some good metrics in place. So there are really two major kinds of metrics. There's process measures and results measures. Process measures are the quantity of something, the number of actions or steps, the frequency during a time period. Results measures is the revenue or the final number of clients at the end of a period. Depending on what growth strategy you're choosing, you'll want to have both process and results measures. So for example, if you feel there are prospects out there that could benefit from the products and services that we have because of how that prospect's needs have changed. So maybe you offer a software solution that's in, uh, really helpful with cybersecurity for remote workers. You have something that's in that, that space. You might select process measures like the number of prospect outreaches that we do, the number of focus groups and um, messages that we communicate to our uh, partners and colleagues. You might track the, um, the number of outreaches that turn into sales conversations, the number of those that turn into proposals, the number of those that go to purchase order. So almost thinking like pipelining. You having process measures for the growth strategy makes it so that you can help your teams commit to actions likely as frequently as on a weekly basis so that you can move your growth ideas forward. Process measures help you stay committed and accountable and your team stay committed and accountable as you look to grow. Now I said earlier, uh, clients want and need the value you provide. And that's because clients pay for results. So sometimes what happens is during a time like this, depending on who our client base is, we'll assume that we need to start discounting or lowering prices because of the economic conditions that are going on right now. And I wanna just challenge you to 
be sensitive to the dynamics in your marketplace, but also to be really clear that there may be results you're providing that are of tremendous benefit to clients and clients will pay for results. So as you price, as you configure your offerings, is you may want to think about ways of, rather than discounting a service, add more uh, months to the end of a contract. Rather than offering your offering at lower prices, think about bundling in another product or service. If I think about um, being a customer of James's CrossFit gym, oh my goodness, the results I want right now, I want my immune system high. I want to be healthy. I want to be participating in a positive way and supporting one of the local businesses. Oh, I will pay very happily for my CrossFit membership. So always think more in terms of the results they're getting and that will keep you less self-conscious and tentative about your growth. Here's another example. Karen Crawford owns God's Garden Treasures. This is a concierge luxury florist in Tempe. So her business had been moving away from let's do a fabulous wedding to creating clients who believed in her brand, which is celebrate your most treasured relationships, business relationships, personal relationships, using custom floral arrangements as one of the vehicles. So she had to very quickly pivot in March. She pivoted in two ways. In terms of delivery, she made it very clear that they could do safe delivery and she pivoted in her messaging. So to keep the revenue she had, but to also grow, she started to talk less about helping clients build relationships in terms of um, like building in a, one kind of economy. She started to emphasize the message of self-care and respect and appreciation and connection for your business relationships, for your individual relationships. And she reached out to her entire uh, email family very transparently and said, we want our business to still be here. Um, we are looking to offer safe delivery, other options. She said, if you want to support our business, you can buy a gift card. That's what I did. I bought a gift card for the future. And in that outreach, she touched a nerve for, um, someone in her network, a leader from Intel. And that leader connected with Karen. And what Intel did is they wanted to do something really special and important for their employees who are now working from home. So God's Garden's Treasure worked with Intel to deliver custom, beautiful floral arrangements to 2,600 employees here in the Valley. So you can just imagine 2,600 deliveries. So what Karen said is that was a three times multiplier of her monthly revenue. And it was a great call for her to be excellent with her margins. So she had a budget, she was able to have beautiful flowers, but excellent delivery. She partnered with 14 different small businesses here in the Valley in order to make this happen. And it's a great example of a growth opportunity that you might not have suspected that connected her values and her growth strategy to something that a client really needed. So for you, what are the most promising strategies to grow now that bring value to your clients and revenue to your business? And the final area is maximize your resources to grow. So when you're thinking about how you want to grow, if you have a new offering, rather than spending months of time and thousands of dollars uh, creating the perfect prototype and then going to see who wants to buy it, get it about 20 to 33% developed and see if you can pilot it, test it, sample it. 
look to improve the current processes you have, continue to work with your vendors, your landlords, your partners, forbearance, deferral, extension, creative partnerships, so that there can be a win-win and a sustainability for the long haul. As appropriate, postpone or reduce your largest expenses. Yes, streamline your smaller or recurring expenses. But I got to tell you, in all the coaching that I do, I often will coach people, you don't usually skimp your way to a lot of wealth. So only streamlining expenses will not necessarily help you grow, although it's one of the factors that can help you be more efficient. And finally, access and utilize the resources that are available. So process improvement, many of you know this, that process improvement for margin and for scale, process is the steps it takes to achieve a goal. And every time there's a handoff of work product from one person to another, one group to another, whether it's information or, or a physical product, you always wanna think, is there value added? Can we reduce waste? How can we achieve the goal? So when you look at process improvement, you may want to think about where are the ways to reduce waste? How can we have less rework, less steps in the process, less time? And then for adding value along the way, can we add versatility, information? Is there a way to scale what we're doing? And a great example of this is our final uh, best practice company. This is Ginger Clayton of Elon Tech. Uh, her organization provides telecom technology and moving services to corporate and government. And uh, we're proud, Ginger is a member of National Association of Women Business Owners, Phoenix Chapter. She's one of the top 25 women owned businesses in Arizona. She's been featured in Phoenix Business Journal and her organization has been through storms before. So uh, economic recession, you can imagine some of the contracts that she works with are large and there's some risk involved. So when this all happened in March, one of the things that, um, you know, in terms of like being smart for growth going forward is Elantec already had a pandemic plan in place because they're a government contractor. So one of the things in terms of growth is you likely want to emerge from this so much more versatile for what's going to happen next. And what Ginger did is she went through a few pieces that were tough but important. She cut her own salary by 40%. She engaged with her workforce, accessed 500,000 of PPP, was able to set it up for now so no layoffs. Three quarters of her workforce are people who do physical moves and technology moves. She was able to say to the folks who are not the movers, we've got a plan for you to be able to take headquarters employees and work virtually. She was able to get um, personal protective equipment and safe pr uh, protocols for the moves they had scheduled. So she was able to have a stabilization in place. Now they had a desire in 2020 to hit $10 million uh, she says, that's not, that's not necessarily going to happen, but they are going to be able to maintain their 2019 revenue levels and are looking for 2021 to be able to grow. And part of that is because she did two creative things. She said to the people who had projects later in 2020, you can move them up and do them now. It's actually safer and faster to do some of these projects now. And the second thing that she's doing is she is getting ready to help organizations to retrofit office space for social distancing so that there's the safe return for other organizations is even more set up for success. So when it comes to maximizing resources, where do you wanna focus next for process improvement and expense reduction? And what support do you need? So you can see we've covered in terms of growth, we've covered some of the mindset pieces about you, about the self leadership, and you'll see in a moment that uh, one of my follow-up connections is if the piece around self-leadership is important and mindset, um, I encourage you to keep going with developing yourself. You grow, your business grows. We've also talked about the strategies you choose and how to achieve value. And finally, 
what process and resources will maximize for you. And I definitely encourage you, you know, if you think about some of the simple business models we showed, once you've chosen a path for growth, there are tools like the business canvas mapping that are excellent for a more analytical nuts and bolts implementation. So take the ideas from today and use the other tools and resources to support your ongoing implementation. So those are my formal conversations. I look forward to staying connected with all of you. For people who want to follow up, we do have this four part video training, unconscious money mistakes business owners make that keep them overwhelmed and under earning. That is a money leadership video training that may be helpful to you. And there's all my contact information if there's anything that I can be supportive with in terms of questions or feedback or ideas. So thank you, Andy and Lisa. And let's see what questions and comments we've got. Thank you so much, Karen. Great, great presentation. I had one to start off if I could. Um, just such great information. What, what one thing do you want our small businesses to walk away with? What, what one idea do you want them to walk away with today? Benchmark yourself and leverage what you're already good at. So it's tempting to want to reinvent. And I would say, what do your clients already know you for? What else do they need? Um, what else can you provide to them? It's like build on your strength that will help you be more confident and it will also i think lead to whatever the next new thing is that's great i love that i think that also applies to those companies that are shifting and working on pivots that you want to pivot from a place of strength you want to try to look at the opportunities that you have to grow with and then work to add to those and, and i like that because a lot of people are looking at pivoting and they look outside so quickly to do something so new, so uh, creative that it doesn't leverage the current strengths that they already have. I love that. We have a question. Um, let me just read this for one second. You might be able to read it on your Q&A. Um, bottlenecks affecting underlying systematic risk. So basically, I think it's just asking about how do companies manage the risk um, as they're starting to move or shift or, or look at these, uh, these changes? Yeah. You know, um, and Andy, maybe we can just, we'll sort of talk this both together here. You know, I think about um, risk, systematic risk, and then external exogenous risk. It's almost like you can only manage so much of it. Like th this, this has taught us all that it's um, risk mitigation is not, um, it requires both being prepared, but also being flexible and learning as we go. So I would say, um, don't stop moving forward with a pivot from strength or a double down on something we already do or having my sales team reach out in connection to customers. Don't stop doing something because you think you have to um, anticipate every single possible thing that will happen. Get into some motion and learn as you go. Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, one of the things that we're um, really exploring and, and trying to unlock is the concept of playbooks where, you know, there is no playbook for what we're doing right now. There just isn't. We don't know all of the aspects that are going forward. However, um, there is a playbook for your business. There is a playbook for your values. There is a playbook for your brand, um, how you execute. Now you just have to look at what are the variables in front of you that you have to add to this playbook that our current conditions, safety measures, um, e e extra activities that your employees have to go through and so forth. Um, so the concept of looking at, you know, your current playbook and then adding to that um, the elements that are needing to change and might be uncertain is something that we're super interested in unlocking. Yeah, 
energetically, that image is a great image. If you think about it, it's almost like playbook. And you know, here in Arizona, if you're doing any kind of sport, think about like the weather. You could have you know, you could have a monsoon or a dust storm or a torrential rain or um, high sun or a javelina at any moment. So it's like um, you're still going to do the thing you're great at, and then you're going to work on your adaptability. And I'm, I'm interested, you know, there's uh, the questioner, David, put um, bottlenecks in. I think often bottlenecks are coming now, Andy. Like, my sense is people, your teams and people may feel timid, more timid than you realize. And as the business owner and as a leader, as you're working with your leadership team, it's helping people feel confident that they can move forward and take a risk and make a mistake and learn. And you're all in this together. Your leadership's going to matter now, too. Yeah, I, I can't I can't agree more. That's fantastic. I love that thought process. Um, there was another question in there that I love as well. Um, it's it's the businesses that just feel stuck. It just you know I don't know where to start. I don't know that first activity that I need to do to move myself in the right direction. Can you share some light on what the first steps would be if you're feeling stuck as a small business? I think first steps would be talk to your existing favorite clients, just human to human, whatever the topic is that you help them with is, um, and just reach out and say, we're here for you. We're learning about what to do next. We wanted to connect. Can we have a conversation? So I, I really think that this is the ironic thing. It's like, start with your customer focus and that for every business owner, gets your shoulders back a little more, gets you a little more in the game. You care about your customers, no matter what your business, like start with your customers and authentic conversations and then do the same with your team and see where that leads. Like just, and also I think our time horizons. So it used to be, you could, you could think about your year long goals. And now I see people just working on the next six weeks that right oh like yeah. you know just the next six weeks the next 30 60 90 days shorten your time horizon and find your energy in a shorter period of time yeah no doubt i think our um our planning cycle now has not gotten to a year it's it's quarter by quarter yeah. um you know my experience on the entrepreneurial side just starting and creating companies we've always worked at this short-term views of how to get that long-term, you know, result. But the short term was so important because every single step you make month by month is so critical. So I think that's a really good view. And I love the comment that you just made. It's you can never lose by focusing on your customers first. You can never lose. It's, it's a universal answer because no matter what you get back, whether it's like, I didn't like your product, <laughs> you at least learn something so important that you have to shift yeah. or you learn, this is why I love you guys. This is why you need to be in business. Um, and I think you can infuse that into your values and your, your brand statement as you start to move that along. Um, as you shift, you know, Karen, as you starting to think about that, it's, it's a little, um, it's a little tricky to always put in the tool sets that are good to use, you know, at that point, but, if you're stuck, I think focusing on your customers, interviewing your employees, really talking it through. And then we have this thing called a SWOT. And if you're not used to it, it's a really cool tool to get that going, which is just strengths, opportunities, threats, and weaknesses. And, and if you look at your strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats, internal and external, you can really start to look at um, where, what you're good at, what you're not good at. What's out there that's something you're probably not going to be able to change, mm -hmm. um, whether that's COVID, whether that's the current pandemic, whether that's the economic um, issues you're facing and so forth. So I think formulating that in that structure could be helpful. Do you agree? Absolutely. You know, that's a, that's a great, simple, but powerful tool. Do a SWOT analysis and do it on the shorter time frame, and and really uh, commit yourself to not uh, skimping on the strengths and the opportunities. And yeah, then, I, I, I like that also. And it's like, you don't have to be an MBA or hire 
uh, an advisory firm to go do this stuff. It's just list out what you're good at. And by the way, talk to your customers to find out what you're good at. <laughs> and, and I would say, um, do not think of doing the lever of discounting prices as your first place to go. It's a kind of a knee jerk thing. We think, well, I have to lower prices now. If you're delivering something people really want, I think people are, depending on who your client is, of course, people are economically challenged or economically um, heightened intensity, but I don't really feel like people are price shopping necessarily if what you have is essential to them being in business or to them solving a personal problem. From your experience with your clients, Karen, have you seen, um, uh, those that can adapt and shift quickly on a digital or a contactless basis and those that are stuck and struggling? Are there some differences between those organizations? You know, I think um, in the information and services world where people were already doing a big chunk of their work in some kind of virtual or semi-virtual way, I think there's been like like, you know, there are banks and other firms that are essential businesses where the office information, uh, intellectual world, technology world, uh, that world has had a little bit more of a head start in how to work together and offer things in a blended way. When it comes to people who are brick and mortar, the place that I've seen people do well is when you get creative like there was a success stories uh, from last week, one of the sessions, and there was a gal um, who has jams and jellies and other products up, up in Prescott. And she was smart about, we went to an outdoor farmer's market and figured out a way to sell that we could do it safely, but we could bring our products there. And the key there, Andy, was partnership. So it's like, if you're, if you're feeling stuck because of your, you have a traditional brick and mortar, you're even some of the um, spas and salons and other things, which are literally like human to human experiences have found ways to get a plexiglass thing up, to mask your folks, to um, sell a facial you know, party virtually, is like be creative and find a partner who can help you. Yeah, that's great. Well, fantastic. Karen, thank you so much. We're definitely gonna have you back um, we're going to force you to come back. So it was, it was a fantastic presentation. We really appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone um, who's participated today. Uh, such a wonderful um, initiative with, that with these boot camps, and we couldn't do without all of you and all of our partners. So thank you again, Karen, and I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. So thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you.